Welcome one, welcome all. Thank you for joining me yet again for another video. But before we get started, subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. So today's video is about the underwriting process, okay? So I always tell people that buying a house is not a quick thing. It's not a sprint. It is indeed a marathon. So you've got your pre-approval letter. You've gone out to see houses. You've made offers. You're under contract. Now it's time for the underwriting process. So what is underwriting? Underwriting is when a third party gets involved. They're going to review the guidelines and review the documents that you send over to them to verify that you are indeed ready and able to buy a home, thus getting the loan. Let me tell you something. The underwriter gets down to the nitty gritty, baby. They want to know everything. So really what it boils down to is they want to make sure that they can get their money back if they give you a loan. They give you a $300,000 loan. They gonna want that money back with a little bit of extra on the top, of course. That's called interest. So the first step in most cases is done on the computer. You're going to fill out your loan application and then upload the necessary documentation required from the lender. That's going to be uploaded into a computer that has the software necessary to be able to determine if you are approved for the loan or if you're not approved for the loan. After that, an actual human being, AKA the underwriter, is going to go in, verify that all the documents are there, and then see if you actually are approved or not. So to clarify, the computer is going to see if you're verified, an actual human is going to see if you're verified, and then you'll get verified if all of your documentation and the guidelines meet the actual loan that you're applying for. So to break it down just a little bit further, once you fly your loan application, that information is going to be pulled and put into the AUS, Automated Underwriting Software. Then they're going to combine that information in, against a lot of different mortgage guidelines. Those guidelines are filled with rules to see what you're qualified for and also what documentation you need for certain situations, et cetera, et cetera. Once that is done, they're going to spit out either an approval or a denial. So once the software verifies that, yes, your information meets the guidelines, then that's when an actual human, AKA the underwriter, comes in to verify everything because of course the computer can only do so much. So if you put on your application that you make $65,000 a year, the computer has no way of actually knowing if that's correct or not. So they need actual eyes to go through the W-2s, the tax returns, the pay stubs to make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. They're also gonna check your income, your employment, your debt to income and make sure that yes, you have the money for the down payment and to pay this loan back because baby, these loan officers are not playing not one game with you. So in case you're wondering who's making up these rules and guidelines, it's the big guys, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, VA, USDA, FHA. They're the ones determining what qualifies you for a loan and what doesn't. Okay, here's a note that you may not be aware of. The underwriter approves or denies your loan, not your loan officer. So don't get mad at your loan officer when things don't work out, okay? It's not their fault. In actuality, the loan officer is on your side. They want the loan to close because in most cases, they don't get paid unless the loan closes, much like the agent. If your loan doesn't close, we don't get a dime, okay? So when you're talking specifics with your loan officer, they're gonna relay that to the underwriter because again, they are the go-between and they really do want the loan to close for you. They are your advocate, okay? Remember that, don't be cussed out your loan officer, okay? Don't do that to these folks, it ain't their fault. Another step that you need to know is that the loan officer is going to come to you with conditions. What that means is that the underwriter told the loan officer that as long as you do these things and provide this paperwork or documentation, the loan will be approved. If you don't do those things, your loan's not going to get approved. So based on what you do or do not give the loan officer, you may have to go back to underwriting. But again, remember, this is not from the loan officer. This is from the underwriter. You do these conditions, you'll get your final approval. Okay, another note. I know I always say note. I'm sorry, but you need to know this. If the loan officer asks you for documentation, please send it in as soon as you can. Because in most cases, your file can't be moved on until you give this documentation. And every day that it takes you to send that back in, you could be pushing back your closing day after day after day. Remember that time is of the essence when it comes to paperwork. 
you got to send this stuff in when it's asked for. It's asked for for a reason. Send it in quickly because the last thing that you want to do is be the own, your own reason why your closing is delayed. Okay, so here is my attempt to help the loan officers and the underwriters right now. If you are asked to provide 15 documents, don't be that person that sends them in one email or one text at a time. You are not the only person that these people are working on. They may have 15 files that they're working on. If you send them in one by one by one by one, they're going to get lost in the emails. And then, you, then you're going to get mad when they ask you for the same thing again. Because you sent them in one by one and they can't find it. Their lives are not dedicated to going through and finding all your individual emails. There is a process of organization and all you're really doing is slowing down your old file. So to help, to help speed things up, please scan your documents, make them organized and put them in one email. All that's doing is helping you out. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> this is my last notes. Notes. Do not open up any credit cards or deposit large amounts of money that can't be verified into your bank account. That's going to do two things. It's going to change your DTI, your debt to income ratio, and your credit score. You don't want to do these things before you are to close on your house, okay? Don't do it. Don't buy a new car. Don't buy furniture. Don't go buy a washer and dryer. Do those things after you get your keys in your hands, okay? That's going to mess you up. Don't do it. Don't. Do it. However, I know that things happen and things come up. You, your car may have broken down. You have to get another one. Okay. But before you do that, talk to your loan officer because remember, they are your advocate and they'll give you suggestions on how to handle the situation. In closing, like I said, buying a house can be a lot. It can be very frustrating. So in those moments that you're frustrated or discouraged or just pissed off, take some time, breathe, call me if I'm your realtor, we will breathe together. We'll come up with strategies. We will calm down. And I'll remind you that what is for you is for you. If this is not the right time, that means time is going to be better later. It's going to happen when and how it's supposed to. Okay? I hope that this was valuable information for you. And if you see this part, you've made it to the end. So you like me or the information that I provide. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.